Okay, Tuesday morning in the kingdom, and I'm trying something different with the me phone because it's been so taught to think. So now it knows when it's upside down, upside right. So we'll try sideways. Since how can we have a volume drop when it's sideways? Yeah, this is hard because now I have to really focus on how do you say where I put the me phone. All right. Okay, this morning we woke up to minus 22 Celsius, but feels like minus 29. Ooh, it is cold. My fingers are cold because I've already done lots of work. Living remote requires lots of work. I can't wait till I'm retired in Shady Pines retirement. Oh, <coughs> oh, <coughs> enjoying <laughs> electric heat in my little room as I eat my green jello that tastes like orange. All right, on the yo-yo scale, minus eight Fahrenheit, but feels like minus 20 Fahrenheit. Ooh, that's chilly. All right, so let's see if we can do a scroll or a turn. This is hard. It's actually easier upside down because you just have to think dyslexic. That's like me. All right, the sun is over there somewhere or maybe the smoke got rid of it. Is that better? I don't know. We're probably censored anyway, so this is probably pointless like my marriage. All right, a quick scroll this way so we can see the world. Yes, it's chilly. Not sure what we're doing today. It might be a good day to hide in the shop and work on those IH cats. Yes, the IH cats. Oh, the stick is heavier when it's at this angle. All right, the wood stove smoke should be here for the Swedish kid. Look at that. She must be so impressed with me. She probably just sent me an email. Yeah, it's a fan letter, a fan email. Yes. Oh, hand and eye coordination's terrible. All right, we just about made one full rotation. We probably have over 40 seconds of setup time trying to get the me phone to work at this angle. Degrees and philosophies. All right, I had to untangle the flags. They got tangled up yesterday or last night. The wind got up. It was unreal. Oh, I better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, for today's video, we're going to hide in the shop and listen to the wood stove. Can you listen to that sound? Oh, yes. Last Nesman, you can feel the heat too. I can feel it coming here. I turned the fans off because we got the fans blowing the heat around because there's no sense having heat up in the ceiling right because that's where most of your heat is and heat loss okay let's go check out what we're doing today in the shop because it's nice and warm good morning kingdom followers sir rodney at west trans here joey's been doing some videos lately on starters he's having a lot of starter issues i personally send joey dixie starters only they seem to last better last longer there are certain companies i might not recommend using I'm not going to mention any names, but customer preference. I know what I like. He knows what he likes. And then uh, there's Old Faithful here too. Let's see. There we go. Those guys there. Always work, but more money. I just personally myself have used... And I don't think I... No, not for me. Might be for you, not for me. Sir Rodney again here, live at West Trans. Going back to my point on the starters and alternators that you all should use. You all use whatever you want to use. For me, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to say yes or no to any kind of different products. I don't want to come in here and give props to products that I don't use. I'm not that kind of guy, but that right there, I'd probably use that over that. Anyways, I'm going to enjoy my Tim Hortons coffee and maybe have a little sip of my bamboo rum. But like I said, I don't support products. Okay, in Wilderness, Alaska, which is in northern Manitoba for these videos, nothing is planned. Yes, nothing is planned. I wake up in the morning and I thank the creator for letting me wake up. I didn't die of a heart attack in the middle of the night. 
or get stabbed by an ex-wife or something like that. Okay, so today we're going to work on these starters because we have some YouTube uh, subscribers or Kingdom followers asking questions. So this is how we answer questions as we do it, right? Okay, so we got some starters going yesterday, but today we're going to get these ones done. I like these ones, okay? Yeah, they don't have a bolt here. They have a little brass, I mean copper nub, nub, yeah, nub stud or whatever knob okay i prefer these ones and i want to change most of the cats over because you're using a lever system like you pull the rod it uh, lever action okay and that it connects the starter okay so this goes on here see the two copper plates when it goes on here yeah, i got it right no okay like that all right when that gets pushed down all three of the coppers touch each other as you can see this one's kind of worn out that's why the fellow over here did some uh, uh, creativity uh, stacked it up okay we're not sure what he did how he did it or if he took it apart to do it but the main thing is he did it this could be that back in the 1950s it could be the 1960s or the 1970s you don't know but the main thing is he did it and you're able to use it so now I have to use the hand file to make the three coppers touch each other in approximate location i'm not sure what i'm going to do with these ones here since they're worn down but i got thinking maybe if i slide this this way this way or take and cut this off make this lower it might work so that's going to be the learning curve today okay we're back in the corner of the shop here and this is the td6 known as laverne with his gas motor so it's best to explain on the gas motor how it works okay See, we have the power. Okay, here's the power over there. We ground the negative out, okay? That's where the master switch is. We have it on the negative side. That's what Caterpillar did back in the day, so we copy it too. So the positive runs from there all the way down along the floorboards and comes up to this side of the solenoid. Okay, this side, yeah, that side. So to activate that solenoid, you have to send power to here and the push button. So that's you're buying a solenoid, you're running wires, you're buying a push button. But this thing here with these lever action, this sits on top of the solenoid or the starter right here. There's usually the holes in them because Delco had them. And then you just pull this lever back and it works out. Okay. So all you do is just pull this back and this is standard. A lot of the IH cats had that thing, the little rod going through the firewall. So it actually worked out good. Simple and easy and effective so the pa pa power wire or the positive wire from the battery would go right to there so that's it so it's cut and dry very simple how it's done that's why i want to switch them over i have two cats in the kingdom with the lever start and i'm going to hopefully change these over because the quality of these solenoids the quality of the push buttons the quality of everything else is not that good anymore the quality of these is dropping drastically but it's a simple how would you say technology and i can improve it here at the end of the world okay okay the next thing you do is you purchase the how would you say these pull lever button thingy me bob there is the standard part number standard motor products or whatever they call it but that just gets you this okay that's all you get okay and it's not the greatest quality and stuff like that because those guys are getting it all from the same manufacturer overseas, okay? Uh, the Eastern Seas, okay? So you buy this, then you need the lever. So I found out that you can go to Steiner's tractor and order the lever and stuff like that. I'm not sure if the pin comes with it or you might have to, but seeing how things are getting pricey nowadays to order the states and everything and shipping, the shipping is killing us, okay? I have a plasma cutter. So I can make those levers because I have a template here and I can drill the hole and it'll probably be three times bigger because I'll screw it all up. But also too, I can also grind to make everything fit. So I can become, instead of a welder, I can become a plasma cutter and a grinder. Okay, back in 1987 when I bought the famous black cat, he was seized. Yes, the gas motor in it was seized. So how do we unseize it? So everybody tries to reach in, and even I was young and stupid back then, now I'm just old. Okay, you'd reach in and put your pry bar on the tooth of the flywheel and all that crap. That doesn't work. So I came up with this idea here, because I was drinking professionally back in 1987. 
And that's AC welding 7014 on the copper. Everybody says, how does this stay on here? Well, it's called welding. And I didn't weld it very well because it was the buzz box at dad's house there shop in the pink house in Alexander, Manitoba I grew up in. So that tells you the booger welds and stuff like that. So that was just a quick fix to get this cat unseized. That was 1987, all right? So then again, this cat, the famous black cat became seized again. I sent it and the red cat to a repair shop and I got screwed royally, all right? So it came back. So the bar starter once again saved that cat. So we got the motor unseized. So that's 1987. It went 30 years, okay? 2017, in August 2017, we had a work bee and we unseized a few cats in the kingdom here, okay? So we have a pipe on this stud here, this little lever bar, okay? That pipe was six feet long and we we're bouncing on it and everything like that and the Bendix finally broke. So that's what I get a kick out of everybody. These armchair quarterbacks or these armchair engineers or the armchair mechanics of the world. Everybody's worried about the copper uh, contaminating the welds when I did it. Well, hey, that's still on there. The Bendix finally broke after 30 years and probably 40, I'd say 40 motors that we saved because we saved them and have to save them again. But the idea of this bar starter is to get it loose. And you don't want this long because you've got to be able to work this back and forth. Because once you break the engine free, you got to jiggle it back and forth, back and forth and stuff like that. You just don't do one rotation. So this star bar starter has served us well. We've made a replacement in 2017. We actually have three or four of these now in the kingdom for different makes and models, and it works very well. Okay, the bar starter is of simple design, and a lot of people don't understand how it actually works. So you're taking the force from the pipe, pulling down on here, and you're transferring it to two or three teeth onto the flywheel. So everybody's worried about the copper welds here. Okay, what about the little shaft down here? Just look at that little shaft, okay? But see, Delco made it and thought things out. This is a hardened shaft, I imagine, okay? So this is your support bearing, so it's in here, all right? So that just sits, this little flange just sits in the hair in the cone. That's it, just the screws hold it. And then over here, we just took the Bendix, sent it out, and welded it. So it's just welded on the back side. that's it. Just a couple welds of the 7014 on AC and 30 years of use. So I'm surprised that it actually went this long for what we did to it, how we abused it, and stuff like that. The replacement we made, we did some more welds on it and everything like that. But that tells you the quality of products back then. We found that out yesterday trying to tap out the Bendix here that can hear the collar and stuff. And then when I did the welds and got grinds on those uh, grooves there to get the teeth from jamming up and stuff like that so that tells you the quality so this is pretty impressive that you can have a six foot pipe a 200 pound man or whatever i think i was heavy then maybe 270 or almost 300 pounds bouncing on there and that shaft can take it and that's just a little wee shaft here and it never once tried to come out of the collar here okay so that tells you the quality that delco had back in the day and I don't think we'll ever see that in our lifetime or the new lifetime or the new world. But wait again, I don't think we'll be using bar starters to unseize old cats and everything because the cats and everything of today are just scrap metal once they get to be five, ten years old. They're just junk. The computer controls it. So I don't think we have to worry about it. So we have to keep this technology alive to keep the old cats and everything going for the future generations to, how would you say, survive. Okay, I found the original video. That's a slideshow on the bar starter. I think I uploaded it on YouTube in 2018 or 19. So I've added some funky educational music so everybody can enjoy. But it's just a basic, uh, the bar starter in a slideshow. Back to regular programming after the slideshow.
Okay, that did not take long to hand file that uh, booger welds that the fella did on the copper thingy stud there. And when I used the flapper disc, that's not the hand file I used. Okay, we had the safety guards on and everything. And I marked on there, it works. We don't know how long it's going to work or what it's going to do. And then I like sealing this up here. It usually comes with a cardboard or paper wrapper. For years, I've used the duct tape because it seals it good. And that's what we do in Wilderness, Alaska better known as northern manitoba as we're freezing to death okay it's my lucky day two for tuesday we got this one to work on the lever but also too we're using the vernier caliper and the magic marker to mark the studs in there to see the contact points and we do a little hand filing everything like that that's what we got to do sit down learn and fix these properly and work with what we have we can't afford to bring anything in from the south or anything like that so it's my lucky day Hopefully one of the local ladies stops by this evening wearing matching underwear for me. Tuesday morning in Whoville, and as you can see, the sun is shining. There's not many clouds in the sky, but I'm sure that will change. It's actually supposed to start snowing here at some point today or tomorrow. Not sure what we're doing in the kingdom this afternoon, but I guess I'll find out when I go over there. Now it's time to let the dogs out and do some stuff around the house. Almost one o'clock and I got the skidoo out and I'm ready to head on over to the kingdom. I got my dad's dog treats and his supper there. I'm not sure what we'll be doing over there today, but I guess I'll find out. I'm pretty sure I'm taking the mini out to do some fluffing on the wood pile and a few other things. So let's get going. A little after 1 p.m. and I made it to the kingdom. Looks like my dad and I are going to go out with the mini hoe down the north trail here and go over to Roadrunner Rock and push up some snow banks. That way when I take the pallet drag out again, I can make the trail a little wider. Once we come back from there, my dad's going to clear out the two drags here and then I'll go down to the shop with the mini while he goes into inside the shop and I'll clear off the log pile. 1.30 and we are going to head down the north trail with the mini and go plow over by Roadrunner Corner. Of course, my dad has his coffee with him. And when we pass by the flags of exercise here, of course, they are tangled up as well. Not much wind today, they aren't moving very much. As you can see, the trails are pretty packed down. My dad came on here with the mini no problem. This is the reason why we packed down the trails. That way they are nice and firm for us to drive on or walk on, especially in times like this. There's no way we'd get the mini through here without this stuff being packed. And of course I get to walk, but I can't catch up to them pretty quick. The mini's not that fast, but the trails are nicely packed even with the little bit of snow we got. It's not that hard to walk on. We're not going very far anyways, just out and around the corner here. Actually, the house is just behind me.
My dad just finished pushing the snowbank up right here. Whenever I came down with the pallet drag and the skidoo, I was always cutting too close on this side, as you can see, because there was a bit of a snowbank here. That's not what I wanted. Last year, I kept getting stuck on this side, so we ended up clearing it on this side. Now I'm over too far over here. So when it freezes up, I can come down with the pallet drag and the skidoo and pack all this down. I don't want to do it now since it's supposed to snow tomorrow. And we want it to firm up before I come down with the drag or else I'll just sink into there. Not sure what my dad's doing, but I'm pretty sure we're going to head back up into the kingdom now and go do a couple other things. I wonder if I can go and jump on the back of the blade and get a ride up to the kingdom. Even with my dad driving on here, it looks pretty good. He didn't gouge it out too much, so once it freezes up some more, I can come down tomorrow or the next day with the pallet drag. And I was able to jump on the back of the mini, no problem here. This kind of reminds me of riding on the back of the cats growing up. It's a lot slower though.
My dad just finished clearing the Z drag off here and the chain drag on this side. That way they're nice and ready for when we need them next time because all that snow in there freezes and it'll be hard to hook up to with the cats or the 41 or whatever truck we take out to drag with. So this will make it a lot easier to pull away when we need them. Now we are back up by the shop. My dad's going to change his clothes and go inside and do some tinkering on the cats and that while I'm out here fluffing up the long trailer. Then we're also going to fill up this wagon with this big stuff and the wheelbarrows on the other side will have this little stuff in it. I'm pretty sure we'll only get one or two more days out of this and then we'll have to take it out and clear it and then load it up with some more firewood. Just put the mini away. I did a little fluff on the long trailer here. Hopefully we can get another load or two with the wheelbarrow out of it, but I'm pretty sure tomorrow or the next day we'll have to go out and clean it and refill it again. Didn't take me very long to fill up the wheelbarrow. Now I'll drag it into the shop. I'm pretty sure he wants it in there already, so I'll drag it into the shop and see if we're doing anything else today. If not, I'll head on back into Whoville with my dog treats and do the weather and mail. 2.30 and I'm just finishing up in the kingdom. It was a pretty easy day. My dad's tinkering in the shop on some starters. That's my dog treats right there. Now I'll go back into Whoville, do the mail and weather. 3 o'clock and I just got back from doing mail. I actually had to run up to the office in Whoville here because I got a nasty little letter in the mail about my garbage bin. They were saying it was dirty and if I didn't clean it out they would give me a fine with the next notice and etc. So I had to go up there and show them a picture that it's actually really clean. Once I'm done putting the skidoo away I'll walk over there and show you guys. This is the letter that I got in the mail. It was dated for the 14th, but I didn't get it till the 19th. As you can see, my garbage bin is clean. There is no garbage in here at all. Maybe just a few little leaves and stuff, but there is no garbage in here. I do have one bag in here though, because this was after they took my garbage this morning. So I'm not sure what they are talking about, but hopefully it is figured out now. 4 p.m. and this is the weather we're sitting at today. It's negative 21 degrees Celsius, which is negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It is pretty chilly out today. There's no clouds in the sky. There was a bit of wind and we even have the moon out. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, edit my videos, and end my day. Okay, just about 6 o'clock in the kingdom and after I came back from riding the mini hoe, I worked on more starters, okay? So these are two scabby starters, as you would say. The Bendix are welded, everything like that. So I just put them together, okay? This one spins or whatever, uh, but it needs brushes. You can just see it down in there. It was all glowing and everything. But you got to remember, these brushes are like 80 years old. And same as this one over here. It spins, but very slow. But that's okay. We got the pieces together. We know what we have, so they're not really spare starters. But also, too, we went through all the pieces, sorted them, marked them, and everything like that. So then when I'm drunk and I'm in the parts shed looking for starter parts, everything's in a bag. So then I can carry it across the yard and drop the bag several times before I get back to the shop. All right, let's go check on the flags. Okay, it's chilly out here. I don't know what the temperature is. The staff will do it. But if we look way up, like the friendly giant we have... I don't know what that is. The space station, Jupiter, Mars, who knows? It's the aliens watching the kingdom. And then over here, we have the moon. Yes, the moon. That's where they said they landed in 1969 and drove around in a 4x4 electric truck. Yeah, right. It was a sound stage. We all know that. And look at the flags. They're in their natural state of being limp. Oh, well. Let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, make a video. Talk to you later.